What did Moses hold up to part the Red Sea? Moses, the great leader and lawgiver of Israel, held up his staff to part the Red Sea, facilitating the miraculous deliverance of the Israelites from the pursuing Egyptian army. The account of the parting of the Red Sea is found in the book of Exodus, chapters 14 to 15, where Moses, acting under divine instruction, leads the Israelites out of Egypt following their liberation from slavery. As the Israelites reach the shores of the Red Sea, they find themselves hemmed in by the sea in front of them and the advancing Egyptian army behind them. In response to their cries of fear and despair, Moses stretches out his hand over the sea, and the Lord causes a strong east wind to blow, dividing the waters and creating a dry path through the midst of the sea. With the waters miraculously parted, the Israelites cross over to safety, while the pursuing Egyptians are engulfed by the returning waters, drowning in the sea. The parting of the Red Sea serves as a definitive demonstration of God's power, faithfulness, and deliverance, confirming his covenantal promises to his people and establishing Moses as a preeminent figure in Israel's history. What was the name of the man who replaced Judas Iscariot as an apostle? Matthias, a faithful follower of Jesus and one of the seventy disciples appointed by Jesus during his earthly ministry, was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot as one of the twelve apostles following Judas' betrayal and subsequent death. The selection of Matthias is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 1, where the remaining eleven apostles, led by Peter, recognized the necessity of filling the vacancy left by Judas among the apostolic circle. Drawing upon Old Testament precedent and guided by prayer, the apostles nominated two qualified candidates, Matthias and Barzabas, also called Justus, to be considered for apostolic ministry. After casting lots to discern God's choice, Matthias was selected and officially numbered among the twelve apostles, becoming a witness to Jesus' resurrection and an emissary of the gospel. Matthias' appointment serves as an affirmation of the apostolic office and the continuity of Jesus' mission to proclaim the kingdom of God and make disciples of all nations. Who was the first high priest of Israel? Aaron, the older brother of Moses, was appointed as the first high priest of Israel according to the biblical narrative in the book of Exodus. Aaron played a central role in the deliverance of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, serving as Moses' spokesperson and partner in confronting Pharaoh and performing miraculous signs. Upon their liberation from Egypt, Aaron was consecrated as the high priest by God, along with his sons, to minister before the Lord and intercede on behalf of the people. The office of high priest conferred upon Aaron and his descendants significant responsibilities, including the administration of sacrifices, the maintenance of ritual purity, and the mediation of divine blessings and forgiveness. Aaron's investiture as high priest established the Aaronic priesthood as an essential institution within Israelite worship and governance, symbolizing the nation's covenantal relationship with God and the preservation of its religious heritage. What was the name of the garden where Jesus prayed before his arrest? The garden where Jesus prayed before his arrest is known as the Garden of Gethsemane, a secluded olive grove located at the foot of the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem. The name Gethsemane is derived from the Aramaic word meaning oil press, reflecting the presence of olive presses used for extracting oil from the harvested olives. Gethsemane served as a familiar retreat for Jesus and his disciples, providing a tranquil setting for prayer, reflection, and spiritual communion with God. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus experienced profound anguish and distress as he contemplated the imminent ordeal of his crucifixion and the weight of humanity's sin. In a moment of intense emotional and spiritual agony, Jesus prayed fervently to his Father, expressing his willingness to submit to the divine will, yet also pleading for the cup of suffering to be removed from him. The scene in Gethsemane captures the profound depth of Jesus' humanity, his obedience to the Father's will, and his resolve to fulfill his redemptive mission even unto death. Who was the Roman Emperor at the time of Jesus' birth? At the time of Jesus' birth, the Roman Emperor was Caesar Augustus, who reigned from 27 BCE to 14 CE. Born Gaius Octavius Thurinus, Caesar Augustus rose to power following the demise of his great-uncle Julius Caesar and the subsequent civil war that engulfed the Roman Republic. He emerged victorious as the sole ruler of the Roman world, ushering in an era of peace and stability known as the Pax Romana, or Roman peace. Caesar Augustus implemented various administrative reforms, expanded the empire's territories, and promoted cultural patronage and religious syncretism. His reign witnessed significant developments in infrastructure, governance, and imperial cult worship, shaping the socio-political landscape of the Mediterranean world. 
the reign of Caesar Augustus is of particular significance in Christian tradition due to its connection with the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. According to the Gospel of Luke, Caesar Augustus issued a decree ordering a census of the Roman world, prompting Joseph and Mary to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, thus fulfilling messianic prophecies concerning the Messiah's birthplace. Caesar Augustus' reign serves as a historical backdrop to the unfolding of God's redemptive plan in the person of Jesus Christ, the true King and Savior of the world.